Hey everyone, Jonathan Baylor back. A very unique and exciting show for you today. Two individuals that I have had the pleasure to work with personally, who I've got to say, people sometimes say, Jonathan, who in the heck reads like 1,300 studies, over 10,000, blah, blah, blah. Like you're, you're crazy. You're crazy. Why are you doing all this? Well, you think I'm crazy <laughs> in a good way, hopefully. Wait till you hear the story of today's guest. These gentlemen maxed out their credit cards. I hope I hope they don't mind me <laughs> saying that. They dedicated nine months of their lives. They traveled over 17,000 miles, 23 flights, interviewed over 33 people with just this, this noble mission of uncovering all of these new approaches and paths that people are discovering to health. So basically anything other than just eat less and exercise more. These guys basically bet their life on, on discovering this and telling the story of all these movements so that we could just live better. I mean, what that's awesome. Like we should all celebrate that. That's amazing. So many, many thanks. And I'm so excited to share with you the two directors of the film that is going to result from this epic effort They'll tell you much more about it, but we have got none other than Tomas Reyes, which I'm totally mispronouncing, but he'll fix it for me, and Juan Carlos with us today. Tomas and Juan, welcome, brothers. Hey, Jonathan. How's it going? Tomas here. Really excited to be here with you. Hey, man. Juan here. Really happy here. So first and foremost, let me apologize for completely mispronouncing the name. So could you gentlemen, please say your names as they are meant to be said so our listeners can find you on the web. I'm Tomas Reyes, so you didn't pronounce it too badly, Jonathan. No <laughs> <word>. <laughs> and I hear also Juan Carlos, J-U-A-N-C-A-R-L-O-S. So Carlos, fine, great. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, Tomas and Juan, the reason I wanted to get your names out there is to me, the real story here is you guys. Because who does this? Like you, you, there must be some sort of fire burning inside you that is just unparalleled. What what motivated you? So first of all, what, what is this mission that you're on and what motivated you to do it? You know, first of all, it's like how, if you think about health, you think what, what, what encompasses all that? And I think food and lifestyle and habits and how mindful you are and some science as well can actually be of great, great help to, to reclaim your health and, you know, Take care of it yourself. Yeah. And I think like for me, this subject, it's a, a lot of it is about a personal frustration with trying the old ways of, of exercising. And I've always been a little bit overweight and I've tried different things that haven't worked. And here I'm getting this, I started researching last year about this new information about people just doing things differently. And I wondered, huh, what are they, is this real? Can I do it? My, can I do it? And, um, if I follow this approach, would, would things change? Then after that, I kind of went down the the rabbit hole of one one person being more fascinating than the next one, and just expanding my mind on all these subjects, which is fascinating to to me. So, if I understand this correctly, was it you gentlemen were having some some personal struggles with your health, and you had tried the conventional just eat less, exercise more, not getting the results you wanted, started to explore alternative approaches dug the results and then said, wow, what else is out there? Correct. And I think I had a visit with a, a nutritionist and a doctor um, la mid last year and the nutritionist was overweight and the doctor did look kind of pale. <laughs> and I'm seeing, and I started seeing these people who I kind of were walking, talking the walk or walking the talk. I'm not sure what the expression is or both. And I just kind of, this, this fascinated me because I started meeting people that w did not only have cogent ideas, their bodies were, you, they looked really well. People that were following what, we're doing, what they were doing looked really well. And that kind of was really, really exciting because uh, a lot of things I had no idea existed, they were actually making it work. And that was really cool. One of the things that fascinated me, gentlemen, about the, the project you're working on, which if I understand correctly, is not only going to be a feature film, but also... Uh, a three-part TV program. Is that correct? That's correct. So, yeah. so the, the title of it is Blood, Berries, or Butter and, and Maverick Wellness Highways. And what I really liked about it, and you guys have gone out of your way to do this, was 
not treating nutrition, fitness, and, and alternative, let's call it medicine, as a fad or a religion or this is better or these things are evil, but more just like what is available, who's doing them, what seems to be the efficacy or not, and, and that's where the blood berries or butter comes from. So what I'm curious is, I don't want to spoil the movie for folks, but tell us a little bit about the maybe mutually exclusive approaches you saw and what what you learned and, and what are your takeaways? Is it blood? Is it berries? Or is it butter? Well, I would say, Jonathan, it's, it's all of them because there's not one single solution for everyone. We all have different bodies with different needs and and after talking to the most you know extraordinary people in each one of these um, let's say food trends, you know, there's like talk what, what they are like blood. What we mean by blood is more of a paleolithic uh, meat and fat based diet. Um, again, berries. We're trying to think about uh, vegetarians and veganism, and butter is this kind of new biohacking movement. Um, but again, the Within those three, there's a lot of similarities about the quality of the food. It has been a huge theme that has evolved, uh, staying away from processed food and the effect this processed food has on your hormones and on the functioning of your body. This is something you speak about a lot and we really like. And it's an idea that we've found that's pretty valid out there. Um, but again, there's a lot of similarity. Um, many of the there's some paleo people that eat a lot more fat than protein, and you have this misconception that. You ha it has to be a lot of steak. But again, it's this um, good uh, food that's close to a natural state, a lot of vegetables, and also understanding there's a lot of misconceptions out there and kind of really understanding what each one is about. Excellent. So it's, if I understand correctly, there seems to be a one, an underlying thread of the quality of what you're eating, making sure you're getting sufficient nutrition. Everyone seems to like vegetables. And then what? I want a little bit of editorial here. What what do you see as being like? Why do some people choose more of the the blood uh, paleolithic route? Some people choose the the berries more of the vegan vegetarian route, and some people choose butter more of this biohacking route. What why does one choose one over the other? Well, Jonathan, we also explore that uh, with a few of our characters who talk a lot about what you believe in. So you start self-experimenting and exploring what's out there, what makes you feel amazing, what, what when you wake up in the morning and you have or not have as, as a breakfast, for example, gets you ready for that day and to, to have an experience of, of being alive that's, that's truly awesome. And, you know, as, as one of our characters say, you could be eating uh, very healthy, but, you know, if you're eating it with fear, then it's not the same as if you're eating something that's, yeah, you know, sort of healthy, but you believe that that which you're eating is is very good for you. So there's a lot of intuition involved. What listening to your body really become aware of whether what you're eating or what you're doing is making you feel good or not. And also, I think there's a lot of misconception. I think if when you think about paleolithic diet, a lot of people equate it with a ton of meat, which is not always true. It's more it's about it. Meat is part of it for sure. But there's a lot of a fat, a healthy fat component and a vegetable component. Same thing with uh, with vegetarians. I think um, there's this misconception that you need all this protein to be high performing. And yes, you need protein, and there's sources that can give you that. But the key thing is staying from being a junk food vegetarian. In which yes, you're a vegetarian, but you're still eating the processed junk food that's ve the vegetarian as opposed to the natural stuff. Um, a lot. So a lot of it is kind of. Misspelling and the but the butter thing, biohackers. A lot of thing people think about very extreme things that can be done. And yes, some things are extreme, but there's a lot of things that are just very uh, normal. The small changes in 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 how you approach, how you can quantify, for example, your your heart rate variability, or how you can quantify your stress levels, that um, that help you do small things that can help you a lot in, in the long run. So there's I think there's within each group there's misconceptions, and they have a lot more in common than than one may think. I was just going to chip in to that. They have so much in common. Let's say um, some people want to eat gluten-free. That doesn't matter whether they're vegan, raw, or paleo, or wild, if you want to call it. You know, the quality of the food, the amount of, veg of vegetables, um, you know, cutting down the sugar. All those things come together in every single 
you know, uh, eating method. Yeah, sure. processed food and sugars, big theme. I think all of them um, kind of stay away from that in, in every way they can. I, I so appreciate that you guys focus on celebrating those similarities rather than demonizing those differences. Because right there, you hit the nail on the head where you said, <clears throat> it's this junk food. And, and that's it's not a small problem when, when 90 plus percent of our population is getting upwards of 60% of their calories from just junk edible products. At, th at this point, it's like the question is not blood, berries, or butter, which is right, but for the love of God, pick, just pick anything other than what you're doing right now because everyone agrees that 60, 60 plus percent of where we're getting our calories is incompatible with any of those healthier lifestyles. Exactly. And what we wanted to explore were the possibilities, you know, like instead of being overwhelmed by how, you know, screwed up everything is in the food industry, more like what are people doing that can actually change your life for the, for the better? That's like an understatement, but like really make you feel so awesome. And it's, it's really easier than, than you think. And the focus on feeling awesome. I didn't mean to cut you off, but it's, it's very important, right? Because traditionally health, when there's actually been studies done where if you say this is healthy, people, that is perceived as a negative trait. Like it's going to be disgusting or it's going to be hard or it's going to be painful. When by definition, being healthy should be like saying it's good it, it, and it's happy, right? Because that's what health is. So that's awesome that you guys are helping to make healthy be healthy again. It's about delicious foods, it's about fun and having, and when you're doing sports, uh, a lot of our uh, characters mention how if something is fun to do, you tend to actually exercise a lot more and you enjoy it and you repeat it. If you see it as a chore and you're kind of exhausting yourself, you, there's the, always the risk of overtraining. And beyond that, it, it's harder to make it part of your daily routine if you're not getting some enjoyment out of it. The other thing I would add is also uh, in the, the, the amazing characters we met is not only the body, but the mind. It's just seeing amazing mental focus, seeing people that I can deal with um, with stress really, really well. And you, you notice it in interviews. I've interviewed, this is my third documentary that I've done. And um, these are really remarkable people in the way that their lifestyle, the way they eat, the way they think about exercise and what they're doing really informs a very... Um, very smart way of talking and a very uh, people that go deep into the research and also can talk with a lot of um, focus and mental clarity. So it's not just about body and the six pack and, and lifting all these weights. It's more the endurance. It's about the ability to communicate ideas well and just a sense of curiosity that drives all of them. That's cool. It sounds like it's just about living your best life, being the best version of yourself and contributing all the wondrous contributions that I think many of us don't even realize we're capable of until we can unlock this potential, which you explore in this, in this film. Absolutely, Jonathan, you're completely right. Yeah. Gentlemen, what are the biggest changes you've personally made based on these interviews? Well, we've discovered so many things. I mean, I personally, um, I've, I had the chance to grow up in a household where, you know, in my family, we love to cook and we love good food and, and that's natural. So I, I hardly ate any processed foods ever. Um, but through this documentary, and, I, and I've, I've always been, I'm a tennis player. I've been practicing yoga for years. Um, but discovering new things like neurological training, like trying to make your brain and your muscles communicate faster and in stronger ways, for example, which is what we'll explore with one of our characters who is truly, truly mind blowing is, you know, something that I could have never, you know, think of just on my own. So looking into that and, you know, discovering that you could actually crank up your level of healthy fat intake per day and your brain will be so grateful. Yeah, for me, it's a lot simpler. I've lost about 22 pounds since beginning this journey. Part of it has been the 
being very thrifty about it. <laughs> <laughs> things like that. So there's still a little bit of hunger, not so much, just a little bit. Uh, I'm joking here, though. Um, but it, I basically, I don't eat any processed food now. I used to eat a lot of it, except like once in a while where it's impossible or we're in the middle of Arizona traveling up to New Mexico and there's absolutely nothing different than than um, a process. But otherwise, I've changed my diet drastically. I, I work 16, 18 hour days every day and uh, I don't get sleepy after for my lunch and I kind of chug along. I think my my performance is 3x of what it used to be, and I used to be pretty effective before that. So I, I, I have felt this transformation through through learning kind of a little bit from each one of the characters, and it's a mindset, but it's also, there's a lot of little things you can do. Um, processed food, we, I, had, I had no idea until now. Now I can feel right away the effect that it did have on me, and it was like a clogged sink. And since it was clogged, in addition to it, it didn't help I wasn't aware of all the damage that was there all the time, but as the sink became unclogged and there's more um, water's flowing better and the my, my mind is more focused and I'm getting a lot more done, I, you, you, gonna, you feel better, uh, you feel a lot easier when something's not, not going right. So um, yeah, it's been, I had applied it to my, my life in a very simple and real way. And uh, again, the weight is better, the focus is better. I just did a battery of, of tests and uh, my uncle is a doctor and he's like, what, what the hell is going on here? I haven't seen these kind of test results in a long time. And I'm, I'm eating a lot, again, a lot of healthy fats and protein, a uh, little amount of protein, a lot less than I thought I needed. And just staying completely away from processed foods, especially sugars, I don't, uh, kind of eliminated that from my from my diet earlier on, and that and again, I'm a I'm, I was an obese child, and my family there's a lot of obes- obesity. My grandma died, died of diabetes, so it's not about good genes that I can't really reclaim the good genes. There's a lot of cultural and um, and really family things that would point to the other direction, and I've, I've kind of gone the other thing, and I don't exercise nearly as much as I as uh, people think I do, I, I'm just kind of, I exercise very little. I wish I could, I like exercise and I like playing, but I do it very little. And it's, again, this idea of the quality of the food and the quality of, of your exercise is really, really important. Tomas, uh, also, there's, oh, oh, there's ahead, a big, sorry. sorry, there's a big aspect also, um, I, I feel I've become a lot more mindful than before when it comes to my days, when it comes to eating and moving. So, because I, I have become very sort of mindful of what makes me feel great and, and not, um, I'm really grateful when I'm, when I'm eating something delicious and that's healthy and that's going to make me feel good. So I sort of take the time to appreciate what I'm doing. Tomas and Juan, this is a, a very just compelling effort. What, what's next for you and what can the listeners do to help get this message of empowerment, because that's really what I hear is this, this is just about empowerment out to the mainstream, which is literally dying for it. We're right now in the process. Again, as you mentioned earlier, um, we're maxed. Uh, we've done it. We put everything in this project. Absolutely. I put it in all my savings and, uh, and Tomas did a little bit of the same and we're finishing up and we need some help with, uh, we have a Kickstarter campaign going um, at, if you look in kickstarter.com at Bloodberries or Butter, you can find it there or at the B3 Mavericks website, B3, M-A-V-E-R-I-C-K-S.com. And a little bit of, you can pre-purchase the digital downloads, the DVD, attend our premiere, and any of that really allows you um, more people to see the film and also you to see the film earlier on and extra footage that we have uncovered as well. Yeah, one thing I would say is like, if, if people can... Google Bloodberries or Butter in Kickstarter and then share the story with as many friends as they can. People that they know will enjoy this and people that they know this will mean a lot, you know, for us. So that would be really cool. Um, awesome. Well, I will go ahead and go ahead and, and, and give that a, a two thumbs up because really, folks, this is, this is just a cool one. You're going to want to check this film out anyway. It's going to be great. So why not? contribute now versus contributing later so that you, you know, you're going to see it anyway. And now you can know you played a part of getting it out there in the first place. Please do a quick Google search for blood berries or butter and Kickstarter. 
check it out, learn more about the project, spread the good word. I think what Juan and Tomas are doing is, is absolutely brilliant. Uh, hopefully the movie will live up to the hype. <laughs> so now you guys got all this pressure on it because I'm saying all this good stuff about it. So it better be good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, I know your guys' hearts and minds are in the right place. And I can't imagine anything but something brilliant coming out the other end uh, based on that. So thank you for dedicating so much of your life, time, and resources to this incredibly empowering message, gentlemen. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks for having us. Listeners, I hope you enjoyed this wonderful conversation as much as I did. Again, we've been talking with the two founders, directors, producers, basically just team (laughs) <laughs> Blood, berries, or butter. Tomas Reyes and Juan Carlos. Support them so we can support each other. And remember, eat smarter, exercise smarter, and live better. Chat with you soon.